But now, of course, what I would be t talking about uh, will not um, will be just a small part of that. So uh, you know, you generally have G, X, P. So you have G for good, P for practice. Whatever you want, you can put in between. So here it is academic research. When we say GCP, it is actually good clinical research practice. But what I would be talking about is about academic research. Somebody had actually mentioned that the NDCT rules uh, actually distinguish those clinical trials which come under the purview of the drug controller are clinical trials. Then what about the other clinical trials? So they should have actually named it as non-regulatory clinical trials. Regulatory clinical trials, non-regulatory clinical trials. But the non-regulatory clinical trials for them were academic uh, trials, that is trial using the marketed products. But you can actually combine that with biomedical and health research. Uh, in fact, some people were even questioning that, saying that even the regulatory clinical trials happen in academia. So what is this distinguish, uh, uh, distinguishing uh, between clinical trials and academic trials? So that is for the introduction. So here uh, we have this uh, uh, guideline brought out by UGC, uh, the good, the GARP, to make it short. So I'll be talking about the framework for good academic research practices, uh, taking just few points from that research design, conducting research, and dissemination of that research. And institutional support uh, to have that done. And also mentoring, which is part and parcel of responsible conduct of research. So um, when we talk of research integrity, it means you know you have all the good adjectives in the dictionary can be put in there uh, as part of integrity, your moral integrity. So honest and verifiable methods have to be used uh, for the study, for the study design, and how you conduct it, and then how you evaluate it. And further, of course, you disseminate that. And that is uh, about publication. And this has to comply with the uh, current ethical guidelines and the regulations, whatever are pertaining to that. And of course, compliance to all accepted codes or norms. Now, when you talk of research, you can see that there has been a steady increase in the number of uh, uh, projects, uh, research projects. And you can see the graph there. Uh, everybody, most of you must be knowing about ResearchGate. Dot net gives that graph, but you must also remember that there are predatory journals and um, the research is actually published of very poor quality, bad peer review, scientific misconduct. Now, scientific misconduct is also called as uh, research misconduct, unethical practice, and conflict of interest. Uh, earlier speaker had already mentioned about conflict of interest like the father reviewing the daughter's uh, proposal. So actually, there is uh, nothing wrong with conflict of interest, but you have to reveal that, declare that, so that whatever you are actually uh, basing your uh, opinion on that will know that, OK, this had conflict of interest. Can we actually resort to some other uh, method to uh, actually lessen the harm that would come otherwise? So you have policies based on that. The institution has to have a policy. The ethics committee has to have a policy. The researcher should also follow that policy. So again, as I told you, lots of adjectives there. Ethics, rigor, relevance, transparency, respect, impartiality, independence, accountability, and so on. When it comes to research de design, how you plan it, that is very, very important. So it has to, I mean, it had been actually highlighted earlier also, it should bear some, uh, uh, you know, um, responsibility towards the society, so it should have a social value. All research is supposed to have a social uh, value. So um, uh, industry, country, and so on, ecosystem, whatever you want, you can actually add to that list. It should be feasible within the resources. And we had a talk in the morning that, resources are not enough, and 
another person saying that there are enough of resources, uh, you just have to tap it. And then data management system, that is very important for having a good, credible data. That's very important. Ethical and regulatory approvals and governance requirements. You have to actually concentrate on what research questions are you actually going to pose and what are the answers that you seek. So documentation is very important and that is what good clinical practice always states that there has to be documentation. What you have not documented, you have not done. So consultation with experts, documentation, uh, uh, chronicles, contribution to discovery, and literature review. That is very, very important. Uh, it actually helps you in framing the question. And always try to see some new angle to that. Don't repeat the same thing again and again. Provides relevant, uh, it should provide relevant references and citation and co-citation analysis. The other part is about data, research methods, and, and analysis, how you approach that aspect. So primary data, secondary data, designing the research, what type of design it should be, choosing the sample, uh, statistical analysis, privacy issue, replicability, and reproducibility. In fact, I think uh, in the morning, uh, uh, Dr. Gupta had mentioned about the statistical analysis. You know, very, very often, you know, people, students, um, you know, they don't realize the importance. The statistician should be involved from the very beginning uh, and not at the end, you know, you take your results there and say, uh, can you please uh, tell us whether this has uh, significance or not. You know, you expect the person to make some modifications so that you get that statistical significance. I have even heard uh, some of the senior researchers telling um, their uh, uh, fellows, uh, research fellows, where are you going? I'm going to the statistician. You don't have to go. You do your work, at the end you can go and consult. So I've heard that also, you know. So who needs education? Not only the students, but also the seniors. So uh, we come to conduct of research now. So how you maintain the data, that's very, very important. How you record it, that actually will help you in analysis and give you the credible data. Data ownership and accountability are other aspects that you have to take care of. And it should be a controlled access. Not every Tom, Dick, and Harry can have access to that. So wherever you are keeping the data in the computer, it should be protected uh, with password, et cetera. And if it is in a, a premise you know, uh, where you are keeping all the records, not everybody should have an entry to that. And some institutions do have the you know, doorway where you have to um, have the fingerprinting for you to get the access to enter those premises. So some sort of arrangement like that has to be there. Archival and retrieval aspects are important. We, we talk about the same thing for ethics committee also. How you archive that, how you can retrieve that. For all these, you need to have a standard operating procedure. Data integrity and security is also important. Data sharing is a very, very important aspect. Would you like to share that data? What about the privacy? You have strict rules about this abroad. Uh, and India also uh, was talking about data sharing, et cetera. I don't know if it is finalized finally. Uh, and the storage period, how long will you keep it? For academic research, you keep it for three years. For regulatory research um, trials, you keep it for five years after completion of the project. Or if the sponsor or the funder wants it to be kept for a longer period, you have to abide by that. Now, uh, naturally, you will be doing the uh, research. So you have to be honest about it. You have to be transparent about it. And then you come out with the outcomes, which, uh, uh, which is the stage uh, when you actually reach um, that stage for publication. Now, for publication, authorship issues come in. Generally speaking, ICMA guidelines uh, mention that you have to follow ICJME. But that may not give you the answer all the time. Because suppose you have, uh, there was an instance in India itself, 256 centers 
256 authors. How do you actually list them? That was a challenge. Nobody is actually giving you guidelines on that. So alphabetic order is the best thing. But you don't know 256 people can actually uh, you know, fight for it. Anyway, so you have institution department policies. Besides these guidelines, international guidelines, and the peer review itself has its problems. CTRI registration. Then uh, the misconduct is actually uh, you know, divided into FFP, fabrication, falsification, and plagiarism. Fabrication is like you, know, you bring the threads, tana, bana, what you call, that's a fabric. There was nothing. You just cooked it. Okay. Now, when you say falsification, it is actually you have some data, but you are modifying it to suit your purpose. So that is falsification. And plagiarism is, uh, plagiarism is nothing but cut and paste content for which you are not actually attributing it to the source. Then naturally, when it comes to collaboration, there are a number of issues about authorship. Uh, and also intellectual property, who will have that. So you have to actually decide about it a priori before you have these uh, collaborative, you know, MOUs and things like that. Uh, and, you know, the intentions of the researchers, you know, they, they would like to hide what they really want to do uh, from the actual intention. Dissemination of the outcome is, of course, selection of the right medium. Uh, where you have to actually publish what is the audience that you would like uh, 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 um, to read, and then selection of the right journal, direction, um, di uh, directory of open access journals are there, reference management softwares are there, and then, of course, translation research, about which you heard a lot in the morning. Institutional research program management is very, very important. Office of Research Integrity, this is very much a fact abroad. Uh, they have office of uh, ORI, they call it, and every institution is supposed to have an ORI, uh, or, ORI uh, office, which will actually oversee the research. There has to be, you know, periodic uh, information generated, and they ask somebody uh, there who has been given the responsibility to see uh, what is the report, anything, uh, you know, amiss is happening there or not. So governance, code of conduct, monitoring, incentives, conflict of interest, complaint uh, resolution, for all these, the institution will have to have a policy. And that policy will actually provide the framework according to which you can work. And then, of course, training. A lot of training will be required. And I'm not going to elaborate much about conflict of interest. I mean, uh, that was already talked about. And then the policies, as I told you, conflict of interest you can have, but you have policies, how to circumvent that. So you have to recuse yourself when decision is being taken about your project. And this applies to both authors, contributors, editors, reviewers, publishers, and ethics committee members as well. So mentoring, it is just like, you know, doctor patient, uh, doctor, Investigator, participant relationship, just like that you have mentor-mentee relationship. And here also there could be uh, ample ground for exploitation. And it always, you know, whenever it comes to publications, you know the attitude that you see in that cartoon there, you know. The head of the department has the final say. And many of the times, you know, I have heard people uh, saying that, who gave the idea then the student says, uh, you, sir, or you, madam, yeah. So that means that person has to be the first author. Okay, that is the indication. So um, when it comes to uh, scientific publications, uh, you see that that is the graph that you can see. Uh, a lot of had, uh, things, ha a lot of papers had been retracted if they are reported or if somebody finds it out. So 43.4% fraud has been reported. So I'll not go into detail about that for in the interest of time. I just wanted to mention that ICMR guidelines actually uh, has brought out in the 2017 version a separate section on research, responsible conduct of research. And it actually gives all these points under that. Besides that, there's another document, document which was released, ICMR policy on 
research integrity and publication ethics. And you also know about Whistleblowers Protection Act. So this is another new concept which has come where you can have 14 contributors, that conceptualization, data, curation, formal, analysis, funding, acquisition, investigation, methodology, and so on. Every person involved with that will have a role. And uh, at the end of it, you really don't know what to do, which road to follow. But listen to the dictates of your own self. The moral integrity is foremost point that you have to consider. And that is the ethics, that is the integral uh, part of you. And the external part is the law which controls you externally. Thank you very much for your patient listening.